Well, you guys got another video. Does optimizing Windows 10 or Windows 11 really work? And are you going to see any major benefits from doing it? That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Now, optimizing, we're going to put it into a category of debloating, tweaking Windows, optimizing Windows, whatever way you want to dress it up. We're going to be talking about all of that in this video and who it's for. Now, I've broken it down into two categories. One of them is going to be for gamers, and the other one is for uh, telemetry and things like that, which is privacy. So let's first talk about the gaming side of things, and we can then talk about the telemetry afterwards. So who would want to be doing this, and do you see much gains from doing it? I think the main uh, people that are doing this are people that have got old systems, and I mean really old computers, like some of those old office surplus PCs that you're using, like Dell Optiplexes and HP and Fujitsu and things like that. A lot of people create content online showing them how you can get these uh, affordable office PCs and convert them into gaming systems. And I think a lot of people have gone ahead and done that. And of course, then they start realizing they're running into problems. They stick a big graphics card in there and they end up with major issues like bottlenecks and they end up with micro stutters, micro freezing and things like that. And this is a common problem with older systems like these because they was never really designed uh, to play games on. So where the problem lies is that you'll get YouTubers that will upload videos and put a thumbnail on there showing a 30 FPS to 200 FPS and people believe that that's what they're getting when they run programs or scripts like these on their computer. And of course, it's all clickbait. It's not true. You're not going to gain that amount of FPS by running programs like these on your PC. Now, what I've seen from a lot of older systems is when you run programs like these, the utilization on those older computers is reduced quite a bit. And that will help with system resources and things like that. When you're playing games and, and when you're using a computer, it's much more bearable on an older system, or on a new computer. I don't think it matters as much, but on an older PC, you will definitely see a little bit of an improvement in that uh, department. So what can someone expect to get with an older computer? Well, at the end of the day, it's an older computer. You're not going to be able to do anything with the hardware. You are just changing some Windows settings. So what is the major difference going to be once you do all of this? Well, you're probably going to be looking at a little bit less utilization of the system. And because the hardware is very old, you'll probably see Windows is zapping a lot of the utilization on that older computer. The CPU runs a little bit higher than what it would on a modern day computer where it'll be sitting there idle at 2% and things like that. It'll be running at a bit higher, even at uh, idle. So these are the things that they're trying to achieve is bring the utilization down so they get a little bit more stability. You're not going to see a massive improvement in FPS. A lot of people will talk about getting 150 to 200 FPS boost by doing all of this stuff. It's simply not true. You're not going to get any of that stuff happening on a computer. It's just doing some Windows settings, disabling a bunch of features, and obviously removing some features, and that's about it, really. You're not going to see a major difference in all of that. Unfortunately, for people that are on an older system, they're probably better off to go and start saving some money and thinking about buying a newer computer to get better performance. Now, what about a newer computer? What happens when you do this on a new PC? Well, in all honesty, I've installed Windows on a brand new computer and I've been testing it with no tweaks whatsoever and I'm not seeing any difference. I've got high processes running on that system as you'll see at the end of the video, I'll show you. It's like 240 or 270 processes running in the background. But to be honest, the utilization is still pretty low. And uh, without having any sort of capturing software, it runs at about 2%. So it's not really using a lot of the system. And I think a lot of that is due to modern day processors being a lot more powerful. We have a lot more RAM and faster RAM available. We have NVMe drives available to us. Everything is a lot quicker. So we're using a modern day operating system with a modern day computer, whereas uh, people with older computers are using a modern day operating system with a really old computer and they're putting a modern day graphics card in there and it's causing a lot of problems for them like bottlenecks and things like that. So I'm not seeing any of these issues. 
But it's not to say that you can't lower the system resources on there by running uh, some tweaks like these, but it's whether you're going to get any sort of gains out of it. Now, talking about telemetry, there's a big difference between uh, debloating systems for to remove the telemetry or at least disable telemetry on Windows. Uh, but really, to be honest with you, I'm not too sure whether you'll ever be able to completely stop it because it's built into the operating system. Yes, you can turn off a few settings in Windows with a little toggle switch, but is that really stopping it? That's the problem. And uh, if I'm honest, for people that have got privacy concerns uh, with Windows, then really the only other option is to not use Windows. So if you use Mac OS, they're going to be collecting data as well. You ain't going to get escape it from there. And you may be getting a few people in the comments section below saying, just install Linux. Well, unfortunately, Linux collect data as well. Uh, maybe not as heavily as Windows, but then Linux is not as popular as Windows. So if Linux ever become as popular as Windows, I'm pretty sure it will go down that same path because that's the way they all go. So the only other real way of avoiding uh, data collection or telemetry or any of that stuff is pulling that Ethernet cable out of your computer and going off grid and not using it online at all. That is the only sure way of doing it. Uh, everywhere you go on the Internet, uh, you know, I get people talking about it on Discord and on, on the comments section. And basically, no matter where you go, as soon as you open a browser, it's collecting data. You know, there is nothing you can do online without having your data harvested. It's just not possible. And it's just the way it works. So for all those people that are worried about telemetry and things like that, yes, you can turn some features off that make you feel a little bit better inside. But are you really stopping it? You're probably not. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't stop you from uh, toggling those features on inside a group policy or places like that to make you feel a little bit better, or at least to reduce the amount of data that is being collected on that system. But at the end of the day, uh, you know whether you choose to uh, use these tweaks to improve your performance of your PC or whether you're doing it to stop telemetry, is entirely up to you. Of course, these tweaks are always going to be around. There's nothing new. There's always been some sort of registry cleaners, registry optimizers, uh, you know, you name it. These programs have been around for many, many, many years. And, uh, you know, they've all claimed to optimize your system, boost your system performance, give you more FPS. And if I created a program tomorrow claiming a lot of those things, how many people do you think would download it? and run it on their computer. Millions of people will give it a go just to see what it does. And this is exactly how these programs work. They put a lot of information up on websites and things like that that will actually draw people in to think that they're actually getting something out of this software, when really it is a placebo, a lot of it. People will run it and go, oh yeah, my PC's running a lot faster. So one of the biggest problems that a lot of people uh, fall for is obviously they go on YouTube and they want to get a bit more performance out of their system. And of course, they see these videos on YouTube, uh, how to get an 200 FPS gains on, on this. They'll show like 30 FPS up to 200 FPS. And of course, it's all clickbait and people will then watch it and it gets high views and people then think it's genuine when really it's just fake. Uh, you're not going to see a massive performance boost like that. And uh, yes, these programs will uh, remove a bit of telemetry or data collecting, turn those features off, and maybe it's going to give you a bit more, uh, less processes running in the background, which will help with older systems. But really, theoretically, what do you expect it to do for you when you're doing all of this stuff? Sometimes it breaks your operating system. Windows does something and it doesn't like it. It ends up breaking and you have to end up doing a fresh install of Windows. And this is what you're going to end up uh, doing a lot of with using a lot of programs like these. They can break your operating system and uh, Windows doesn't play well uh, with a lot of this stuff if you don't know what you're doing. So here we go. We run all these programs here. Let's take a look at the processes. Now we'll drop this down to 82 and utilization is about the same. But really, you can see the processes as dropped. Now remember, this is a virtual machine. This is not a real machine. 
And again, if you started installing all your programs on here, that would start going back up again. And uh, you don't see a before and after with a lot of this stuff. People don't run benchmarks with before they did all of this and after they've done all of this and see what the major difference is. And that's because there won't be a major difference. It will be all within margin of error. And you'll probably only see like a five frames per second difference, if that. And it will all be within margin of error. If you run it three times, you'll probably see you'll get the same results. Now, I think what we do uh, to ourselves is we're looking to get better performance out of a PC. So we run something on our PC, one of these programs maybe, and straight away you're looking for an improvement. And a lot of it is a placebo. You actually think that you've achieved something because you're seeing reduced numbers and things like that. And I think it's all in the in the mind. A lot of it is just, and you go, oh, you open things up and you go, it's a little bit more snappy. And really at the end of the day, it's it's not much difference. Now look at my PC. This is my real PC. Utilization is a little bit higher because I'm recording the screen, as you'd expect, but 270 processes. Now, I don't believe that a lot of these processes are running and using a lot of resources. Otherwise, you would see a higher utilization, right? But it's just not. And I think this is where people get this idea that all of these processes are making a major difference. And I just don't think they are because I don't see much difference on this system when I'm running the computer or playing games. It's pretty smooth. And I've done this as a test to see. And uh, I will do another video showing you a before and after if you want to. And maybe that will be a video in the future on a real machine. And we'll find out whether it does it or not. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.